Hi, it's Larry Herb, Xbox's Major Nelson. Welcome to the show. Uh, excited this week because Jeff is out. Well, I'm not excited about that. Uh, Jeff is out. Rebecca is not available this week. And I, I've been teasing this for a couple weeks. I have a very, very special guest. And I hope I didn't oversell it. I mean, I kind of feel like it did. So let me hit the button here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know him, you love him. Jack Patillo, Jack, how are you? Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to your disappointments. That's right. I'm just Jack. <laughs> from Rooster Teeth Productions. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me on, Larry. I appreciate it. My pleasure. A lot of people know you exactly from Rooster Teeth Productions. You've been you've been around this the games uh, industry for a long as as long as I have, right? You know, twenty plus years. We've made a living <sighs> yeah. out of this. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. I got my start. I was writing for a movie review website initially, and then uh, I worked for a video game company called Aspire in Austin. Yep. And then ended up making friends with the, the Red versus Blue guys, the Rooster Teeth guys. And then I met I met Bernie at a poker game. And then you know three months later, I was writing for them. And that was geez, thirteen years ago. So it's it's pretty wild how everything's gone. But it's uh, funny. It's been I, good. I, it's good seeing you. I always bump into you at like conventions, and it's always like we got to grab lunch. But we're like conventions are always the busiest we ever are, so we never have a chance to. And it's funny because whenever, you know, you mentioned Bernie, who's a good, you know, obviously you work with Bernie and I've, I've good, Bernie's a good friend of mine and I've known Bernie a long time. Whenever I bring up Bernie, everybody asks me about the famous massage episode. Do you remember that story? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Where I've he, blocked it out of my memory. Oh, he, no, he was texting. He, I was in his phone. And he was, and apparently his masseuse was named Larry and he started texting me, at, you know, setting up masseuse time. And I'm like, uh, sure. We could talk later about this. <laughs> So, nice nice get extra friendly with them yeah ask yeah. Him about that but anyway it's good to see you we're, we're gonna have you on the show this week we're gonna talk obviously you're on the show talk about uh you we're gonna talk about what we're playing we got some news later on i'm gonna we've got an interview with apex but i want to talk about i can kind of see it right there you've got your very own podcast now let's talk about that <laughs> Yeah, so Annual Pass is my new podcast. You were actually on one of my shows forever ago, Keeping the Lights On, and we kind of went off on a tangent talking about theme parks. Right. And this little nugget of an idea of doing a theme park podcast was always in the back of my head, and we finally went for it. We've got it up and running now. It's uh, it's over on anywhere you get podcasts. But yeah, it's it's me and Jeff Ramsey, who's another Rooster Teeth uh, you know creator, and uh, the two of us talking about <laughs> theme parks pretty much. Anywhere on the planet, like our our dream is absolutely to uh, eventually go to Japan. So we actually use the hashtag Japan. You will pass. Yep. Um, now, why? Uh, why yeah, tell, I, tell me I, about that. Why? <laughs> why? Because Disney Seas apparently is like the greatest theme park on the planet. And so my dream and my goal is to go there. Have, have you been there yet? Uh, so a funny. The answer is no, but yes, but no. Okay. And let me explain. Um I was back in the late 2000s when I was going over to Tokyo all the time for Tokyo Game Show. So 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I was going over there. And and, and if, if you've never been to Japan, Jeff and I talk about it frequently because Jeff on the show, and he and I have been quite a bit, Jeff Rubenstein. And you always you stay, we stay down, we stay in Tokyo proper. When I stay Tokyo proper, I mean, it's massive. We used to stay in the Shinjuku area yeah, yeah. and we would leave er, like seven o'clock in the morning, go over, take a train from Shinjuku station to Tokyo transfer. And then it's like an hour and a half to two hours out. So it was, it was a, it was a full three hour commute one way. And so I finally remember one year, I'm like, you know what? Every, we go by Disneyland, Tokyo Disneyland, and it's two stops more. And we're at the, at the convention center. Let's stay at Tokyo Disneyland. Now, imagine trying to get that by the Microsoft corporate travel people going, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so we, I was able to swing it. And so we stayed at Tokyo Disneyland, but we never got to the park. That's the that's why I'd oh say yes, God. but no, but yes. That's cruel. That is absolutely yeah. cruel. It's yeah. it's like, you know, going to like the Shanghai parks, going to Tokyo parks, like that's that's a dream. I've been to Disneyland Paris and uh, I, it was a yeah. really weird thing because actually I, I worked at the Disney MGM studios, now Disney Hollywood studios in Orlando. I did the Walt Disney World College program. Right. And so they have the Disney Studios Park in Paris It's kind of the secondary park uh, in Paris. And it's basically a copy of the Orlando Park, but nothing's in the right spot right. everything's a little bit different and it's really kind of off-putting but it's like you recognize things like they had catastrophe canyon there they lights wonders action there but it's like it's not where it's supposed to be but yeah anyway but the annual pass though it's it's a lot of fun it's uh, we come, we release episodes every thursday and it's just me picking a specific uh, attraction going into depth on it and telling jeff about it because jeff is a, a new theme park fan right before the pandemic hit he went to disneyland with his girlfriend and, and like his life changed and right. so now he's super excited to like learn more about theme parks and 
and we yeah. got to go to uh, we got to go to Universal Orlando and actually ride the Velocicoaster the day before it opened. Sure, and that was a blast. It was so crazy. And now we're trying to figure out stuff, but no, the, you know, I, I would love getting, to come traveling on. right now again has become difficult. So uh, yeah, exactly. But but I seriously, I would love to come on because I I think I I and I don't want this is not your this is not the annual pass uh, <laughs> podcast. But I mean, I think I said to you before we got on the air here. You know, I've been to Disneyland and Disney World many times. I've had I've had dinner at Club Thirty Three. I've been invited there. I've been into I've been into Walt's apartment right on the left hand side as you walk into Disneyland. Oh, wow. So I, I mean I would love to. In fact, I wanted to show you this. Yeah, would, this is this is something I would, I'm very I'd love, love that. Young. This is this is kind of something fun that I have, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is. Yeah, yeah. My wife got this for me. It's uh, back in the day before they had these, you know, all day passes. You had to buy ticket books. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this was a ticket, a rare ticket book from 57, 1957 to 58 for Disneyland. And uh, so I have that framed in my home office here. And so I wanted to show that. That's, and I, not, I noticed on there, too, that there's no e-ticket because the first e-ticket attractions, I believe, were the monorail and the Matterhorn, which right. I, we just did an episode on Matterhorn. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you only see the E through D's. There. Did you that's, talk about the basketball court? We did. did yeah. Talked about the basketball court and the climbers, uh, <laughs> right. you know, when they get up there, when they get bored. Actually, I don't know if, if you've watched the Imagineering story on Disney Plus. It's incredible. Yeah, and they, they go into depth. on that. Stuff. So, anyway, I could I could ramble on and on and on about theme parks and Disney and Universal and all that. But well, what, we should what, probably talk I, about some Xbox stuff, right? Let's talk. Well, first of all, welcome to the Xbox official Xbox podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a you know, bunch of stuff. What, do, what have you been playing lately? I mean, with all your theme park and what have you been playing? I got to ask you that, man. Honestly, um, I the most I've been playing of any game. I'm just like we're swamped right now with a bunch of stuff. The, the biggest thing I'm playing right now is Minecraft. Honestly, yeah. Um, we've uh, we've just started up a brand new world in Minecraft where we have all the different kind of legs of Rooster Teeth in the same server. And so the idea is like we have an achievement hunter area, we have an RT animation area, we have an SDF area, and then everyone's got a building on their own and their own little thing on this one massive server. And then we'll have competitions, so almost sure. like Survivor, yeah. where we can like mix everyone together. And so uh, using Fine. some mods and stuff and having a, having a blast with it but it's I, I mean that's it's such a such a great game like a game like that it's it never gets boring you can always find new stuff and especially the modding community has been amazing too and they add so many things to it like the mc park server i don't know if you've ever been on that but there's actually a full-fledged one-to-one theme park server that's yep. awesome you can go ride rides at disney world it's anyway again i'm getting back to i'm getting back to theme parks i apologize no that's quite all right all all roads lead to theme parks uh yeah it's interesting because rebecca who's usually on the show who's off this week you know she handles some of the pr for it and it's to your point there's always something to do but there's they're always adding more as well right i mean there's always something going on and and minecraft is one of those titles i know in my neighborhood all the 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 parents will come up to me and say is it okay if my kids play minecraft because it's not really a game right and i'm no it's not a game so <laughs> yeah, it's 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 virtual Lego is how I described it to my my uh, sister when she when her sons wanted to play. And so well, they love it. And those guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. a combination of virtual Lego, but also it's kind of the the modern sandbox like you and I when we were growing up, yeah. we would go we would go to the playground and learn. And, you know, if you get into a fight with somebody, you get kicked off the playground or something. But here you get kicked off a server. Right. So it's That's true. That's right. True. So, so it's just it, no. it's just the social the social constructs are just kind of transferring over a little bit. I don't want to get too deep. So yeah. Minecraft, you're playing Minecraft. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. M- much like when we were children running around with diamond swords trying to kill each other, you know, right. and <laughs> withers and whatnot. So <laughs> but oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yes. it's I mean that um, the new uh, there's new Assassin's Creed DLC coming out pretty soon yeah. uh, for uh, for Valhalla. So I'm looking to wrap up that story. And now, like now, the rumors are I guess the, I guess they announced it finally. The new um, the new like Assassin's Creed world or whatever they're building up so- sounds wild. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I kind of I, I dabble my hands in a little bit of everything right now. Um, what is it? Uh, pressure washing simulator is, oh, has been on so the uh, the list of things. <laughs> it's pretty much anything that's relaxing and peaceful is what I go for. So, so, so maybe yeah. what's not relaxing, what's not peaceful. Did you play that the Halo Infinite technical uh, beta last weekend? Did you get a chance to play? I didn't, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, my wife's thirtieth birthday oh, fell okay. like over that period, that window, and yeah. so uh, yeah, I was pretty much with her. We had friends coming from out of town, and so we spent all that time. And then I'm like, okay, and it's over, and, like, and oh, we're done. All right, I and guess. scene. Um, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'm going to dive in head first when I can get my hands on that again. Yeah, so that's that was a lot of fun for those of you. I had a, you know, it was interesting because it was they 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 tw- they they tweak the um the playlist so sometimes you're playing against bots sometimes you're pvp and i was really excited because friday night i got in there and i think i got like 18 or 20 of the 50 50 kills and i was like feeling pretty oh, good wow. jack turns out those were like recruit or scout level bots <laughs> and then sunday night i played against the uh the 
the Spartan bots, and it was it was bloody. I think I got one kill. It was yeah. it was it was. But yeah, the, the game felt really good. Yeah, I'm pretty garbage when it comes to PvP. So uh, yeah, any any time it's like me versus another human, unless it's Griffball. Griffball, I'm actually pretty happy with. <laughs> ah, uh, but when it, when it you put a gun in my hands, I, I I have no business being out on the field. Griffball, that's a, that's just such a classic callback. I mean, that was that was such one of the greatest things. I mean, you guys work on so much fun, and that that just that was such an organic, lovely surprise that came out of Rooster Teeth, right? Yeah. That was a uh, so the uh, it was a a video called DIY. It was the uh, the launch of not not for uh, it was Forge was in Halo three, right? Um, Yeah. Yeah. And so in Forge and Halo three, they developed uh, there was a map where it was kind of like a big open world. And so the guys just kind of made this this map and it was like, oh, let's make a sport out of this. And like, you know, you can you can do modifiers. So like anytime someone grabs the ball, they go they go you know, orange yep. and then you have to kill that person. And it's just hammers and swords. And it was like they, they've they developed into a thing that's now like official is like canon as part of the game, which is right. absolutely crazy. And uh, but yeah, I mean, aside from like the I, I kind of I kind of drifted away from before the whole like passing came into play. Right. So um, but, but I can still I can still handle myself pretty decently with a, with a hammer and sword and playing some grip ball. But you can uh, still hold your other yeah, than that. So, so that's no. yeah, I got to play. I'm looking forward to seeing how that comes back. But uh, what else do we have? We got I've been playing a little bit. Hey, have you played Hades? Hades on the console is out. Uh, in fact, it's coming to Game Pass this month. I got a chance to play it a little earlier. I've I've had so many people tell me to check it out, but I haven't gotten a chance to actually play it myself. So play that I'm yeah, playing. I'm, I'm Death, woefully behind. Death's Door, which is also I'm into. Um, the Ascent, which we had an interview last week, is out this week. I mean, it's just it's just crazy. It's uh, and then of course we talked a little bit about um, about uh, about Apex. And are, are were you ever an Apex mm-hmm. Legends person? Man, I, I liked Apex because Lifeline was great. I love being the healer. That's always my jam. That's always my go-to. I was Mercy in Overwatch. I, and I, anytime right. I can be a healer, I'm I'm down. So you're support again, class. You, exactly. You, you put a gun in my hands, I got I got nothing. But you know, you give me a like a, a syringe or you give me some paddles, like, okay, okay, maybe I can do some work and help someone who's better than me. Uh, but yeah, even like I remember God, Battlefield Bad Company 2, the oh. medic class in that was like the best medic class ever. Right. And I'm hoping now with uh, with Battlefield Portal, I think is what it is, that yeah. maybe it looks like I saw like the paddles versus knife thing. And I'm like, OK, maybe maybe there's something there. Maybe I can actually jump back in and do some work. You know, so. it's funny. We had an interview a couple weeks ago with the, t- the team from uh, Battlefield about Portal, which for those of you that don't know, is kind of there. It's their version. If you play Halo, it's kind of like Forge, but not really. You can kind of set up rules and things like that. So it's a different take on it, but it, it allows you to customize it based on what the community does. So I guess I'm going to say right now, Jack, uh, talk to Jeff. I want some Griff Ball in there. <laughs> Man, Battlefield Griff Ball. I didn't know how that would work. Right, right. I'd be crazy, though. I mean, if you, if you could do, I mean, because Griff Ball is typically 4v4. Right. So I wonder if you could do like just like 30v30, get silly with it. Or, or like, 30v30 be... of, you know, tanks versus <laughs> entry or something <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That'd be but, a blast. But anyway, yeah, we're playing that. So, you know, we got, the, we got the interview with Apex. So why don't we why don't we take a break now? We'll roll that interview. And then do you have some time to stay with us on the other side? We'll talk news and so forth. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I promise. Okay, I promise. We're going to go do this interview. When we come back, Jack will be here. He will not be on an attraction. I promise. I hope. Okay, here we go. Well, maybe. Maybe. As anybody that's tuned in knows, I am a huge Apex Legends fan, and I'm very excited to have joining me uh, on the show today, Stephen Ferreira and Travis Norton. You guys are uh, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Thanks for having us. Now I want to talk Good a little bit you. about what you do because 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 uh, Stephen, you do you're you're kind of the the Uber guy, but uh, Travis is the man behind the brand new legend. So we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. But tell us a little bit about about your roles. I mean, I kind of told everybody, but tell us a little bit more about them. Sure. Yeah. As, as the team director, my job is really just to help all the really talented people make apex what it is and so as long as i don't get in the way and i keep uh, supporting the team with whatever they need then i know i'm doing my job yeah we call that management overhead <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right that's right and travis tell us about your role there because as i said just a moment ago you you were responsible for the new the new hero yeah, so uh, I'm a gameplay engineer, I guess, slash designer. So I actually did the design for the character, but then also the programming for uh, for him as well. So it's uh, very exciting to have Seer launch. Tell us a little bit about what what you worked on before Seer, because obviously he's he's a newer legend. So you've, you've done you didn't just waltz in and start working on that. But what are some of the other areas we can see your fingerprints on in the game? Uh, so Seer, actually, I started him. Pr- 
pretty early on when I joined the team, but I kind of worked off and on on him. So I right. did the original prototype for the new Rampage LMG uh, mm-hmm. way back in the day. I helped out with some of the map stuff um, that we saw in season eight. Uh, and then after that kind of came out, it was it was full time on Seer and just kind of nailing down the gameplay, finding the fun, all that kind of good stuff. So tell us, tell us about what his abilities are and how he fits into the gameplay narrative and how he fits into the meta. Sure. So he is uh, a recon legend. So there's definitely some similarities between, you know, other recon legends like Bloodhound and, and even Crypto to an extent. Um, his passive is uh, the heartbeat sensor. So when he goes into ADS, he can detect enemy heartbeats uh, like in his viewport um, and kind of get, you know, indications with a UI element in terms of where the enemies are. Uh, that UI will actually fill in too if his tactical would land at that moment. So kind of the, the passive is really tied in closely to the tactical. Um, and you saw those kind of drones that he was controlling there. As the tactical goes, he kind of summons them out into this cylinder in front of him. Uh, and it's a bit of a short delay, but after that, um, it'll it'll go off and it'll scan enemies and actually reveal their heartbeats, or not their heartbeats, sorry, their health bars, uh-huh. uh, which is a first for, for a Recon Legend, um, and do an interrupt, which is also new. So if someone is popping a shield battery, uh, reviving their friend, you can actually interrupt that as Seer. And there you can see, see the tactical here. Yeah, I mean, that's a really so, cool design as well, because the focus of attention, I was noticing that when I was playing a little bit last evening. It's it's a neat design, and it kind of carries over to his ultimate, which is very cool, and I'm sure we'll see that in a minute, because that that is a tremendous, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's really cool. Explain how that works. Yeah, so he's got this heart chamber there. You can see him pulling it out, and he throws it, and then when it lands, it sort of summons this net sphere of there those micro drones. Yeah, yeah, there it is there. <laughs> and then anyone who is moving faster than a crouch walk um, or firing their weapon You'll see those little kind of like footprint VFX that, that reveal their location. So there is some counterplay where if you're not moving, you're not revealed, or if you're crouch walking, you won't be revealed either. Um, but yeah, it's sort of interesting to, you know, the fight breaks out, you throw that down, and you can kind of get a real read on the battlefield of, of who's where, and, and also even set up your tactical if, if that's all. Now, now your opponents, when you're when you're using Seer's ultimate, your opponents can see that dome, correct? They can see the dome, yep, and they can actually shoot that heart chamber at the middle to destroy it. So uh-huh. as this year, you kind of want to be careful where you throw that. If you throw it right into the open, it's probably going to get taken down pretty quickly. Yeah, pro tip there. That's I mean, it's it's a it's a nifty design. I play like I say, I played with him a little bit last night, and he's got some nice he's got some nice feel to it. I mean, it's how, how's it been? I mean, I know it's only been out uh, if, you know this week. It dropped this week. It's now available. How's the reception been? Yeah, so far so good. I mean, he's he definitely brings some new and interesting stuff to the game, and you know, there's chatter that he's you know he's, he's really strong, he's overpowered, all that kind of stuff. But it's he he's been popular, which has been cool. And you know, I, I put out a tweet yesterday saying you know, welcome to Emergence and, and happy launch and everything, and got a lot of positive replies and stuff like, oh, I love the character, like great job and stuff. So it's it's really awesome to to hear. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was kind of looking through the uh, the conversations last night, and that's exactly what I was seeing. I, I want to talk a little bit about. Um, you know uh, about the, the the this season and what you guys have done for this season. So I don't know who the best person is to talk about that. Uh, so who, who would that be? We'll jump back and forth depending on what it is. Go yeah. ahead. And... Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, sorry. So who... <laughs> what? Sorry. What specifically about the season do you, do you, I just wanna, want to talk, do you want to touch what, on? I want to talk a little bit about what you guys have done for the season. What What are some of the new things and what are some of the tweaks uh, that you've learned from you know from the past few seasons? Right. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I think. Every season we're learning, right? Like the game, that's one of the great things about a live game is that, you know, we can, we, we don't have to wait long to, to find out what's happening, whether it's by looking at the data from the game or listening to the community or bringing players in to do internal play tests. We're constantly looking at the game and seeing what we can change. And as we introduce new elements to the game each season, it really, by nature, shifts the meta yeah. uh, quite, a, quite a lot that we have to always be adjusting kind of because we're, because we're adding things to the game. So, you know, season to season, you kind of see the some of the similar things that we drop, and this season's not really any different in that regard. Seer, as a new legend coming into the game, means that we shift around, uh, you know, what we expect to see in terms of pro play meta with, with characters, but also in, in more casual play. Um, with the new map, that's always a very big one. Yeah. And that's one of the ones that we really try to adapt to what's how it's being played to date. Um, so we're pretty excited about the changes to World's Edge. We got a couple of big changes going on there. One, mostly in the north end of the map. So those was one of the big kind of themes for this season, yep. was trying to get uh, more, the, the drops being spread out a little bit more and using more of the map. 
that's one of the advantages that World's, World's Edge actually has is the size and the amount of POIs. But we notice that there's some of the areas aren't used as much as others. So particularly the north. So where we used to have refinery, we actually changed that POI out and uh, replaced it with climatizer, which is much a much larger POI. Mm -hmm. It has a lot more loot. It has a very different type of gameplay experience there than was there before um, with the type of buildings and structures and landscape. It's much more separated now because if you remember the fissure that broke up a uh, fragment and yep. created that big separation, yep. that's now extended all the way to the north end of the map. So we have that same kind of separation gameplay, but we've added a new element to it this season, which is the similar to what we had uh, when we introduced World's Edge with more dynamic movement uh, in the train. We've done the same thing with gondolas specifically for the new POIs. So uh, you use these gondolas to kind of traverse the big gaps that are created by the fissures, uh, and that creates more of a spaced out type experience in those POIs, given that they're much bigger as well. So that fissure kind of extends, like I said, down from uh, its origins uh, in the center of the map up to the north. Uh, and then when we get to the center of the map, one of the other big changes that we had, uh, one of the long standing popular POIs that's been there from the beginning of World's Edge, um, Sorting Factory, we've replaced that with Lava Siphon. So yeah. the idea is that, you know, World's Edge is coming apart. We're pushing it to the extremes. It, it's starting to really, really crumble at this point and so lava siphon is just one more attempt to try and keep things together and uh and and so that poi has a similar style uh gameplay to what you see in climatizer in that it's separated by a giant lava pool it's got gondolas connecting the different buildings um across that poi and it's uh, again th that was already a large poi so it already had a lot of space for a lot of squads to drop, but it's a very different play experience that you're going to get in there now. Um, along with that, there's a couple other smaller changes that we made. Uh, one was around train yard. So train yard's always been some something of a peculiar POI uh, <laughs> to say the, the least. Game. And the, <laughs> yes, yeah. There's a lot. There's obviously a lot of vertical gameplay. There's a lot. It's it's quite. Even though it's not super big, um, the way it's laid out and the way that you have. Uh, views into that POI, it's really easy for there to be a lot of um, squads to end up there and constantly churn and get third partied in that space. And so it becomes somewhat of a, of a, uh, uh, a fortress to kind of hold and keep getting churned over. Yeah. So we wanted to clean that up a little bit and, and remove some of the frustration that we've heard players uh, talk about there for, for some time. And so we've cleaned that out and there's a, as part of the destruction of World's Edge and the instability you saw maybe in the teasers, you know, the rumblings happening in the different loading screens and things like that, part of that earthquake ends up uh, leveling out uh, train yard. So it's a similar POI in that it has some of the same, it retains some of the same elements, but it's a little bit streamlined and cleaned up. Um, mm -hmm. Aside from that, we always try to change and kind of make it more efficient for how people move from POI to POI in the map. So there's a couple of small changes that we made about how you rotate around the map as well. But that's a big one for us. Yeah, it's interesting. You brought up, um, you know, my, one of my favorite jobs is, drops has always been Sorting Factory because I just always love the verticality of it. And there's just enough. To, you can easily drop over the side of the, the cliff if you run into too many problems mm -hmm. or, you know, the train used to come through there. So I'm going to be very interested to check that out. But that was always always one of my favorite spots. You, you said something right at the beginning there that was very interesting. And I, I think a lot of folks, maybe they know this, maybe they don't. But, you, you know, because it's a live game, you know, you guys are constantly updating it and it's connected and people, you, you can see the data and matchmaking. But you're able to kind of look at the heat maps. I know that the, we used to call them when I was working on some of the Halo titles, it was the heat maps. So you could see, and that's more of a map of here's uh, where during all of, the, you know, so, you know, all of these uh, matches, here's where a lot of the people are having these interactions. And it's yeah. interesting because I assume you have the same thing and you're able to look at that. And that's why you made those changes for the north end of the map because your, your heat map was probably pretty cold up there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> which which thematically actually makes sense since we also increased the amount of snow in that, on that side of the map. We kind of <laughs> dialed up the ice and fire for the map overall right. as well. But definitely uh, that's that's one of many kind of data points that we use to figure out what we want to do next. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of different inputs and a lot of it is also just creatively what the team is interested. They've got an idea and, and it'll fit nicely into a certain area. Um, and so all of those things are obviously taken into account. And then, uh, you know, the outcome is what you're seeing in, 
in Emergence, which I think is uh, it, it's it's pretty awesome. I'm 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 loving playing it, and I'm excited to see everyone jump in there this week. Yeah, it looks. I mean, it looks it looks amazing. Um, but it's it's it's. I'm looking forward. I had a little bit of time with it last night. I need to spend a lot more time with it now. It's 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 available now. Travis, I want to talk to you about, you mentioned it a moment ago when you were working on Seer, the Rampage LMG, and I, I, I don't have that video right available right now, but tell us a little bit about what this LMG uh, is all about. Yeah, so uh, Rampage LMG is another, you know, heavy ammo LMG. The Spitfire has been moved to the care package for this season. Um, you know, obviously very strong weapon last season, so that's been moved there. Kind of made room for the Rampage to, to come out onto the ground loot. Um, it is a, it's our slowest rate of fire LMG, so it's got a really satisfying, like, thunk, 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 thunk uh-huh. kind of cadence to it. Um, so kind of your mid-range LMG, I think up, up close you're going to get outclassed by, you know, an R99 or a Volt or something a bit faster firing. Um, but it does have this unique mechanic where you can actually take a thermite grenade and put it into the rampage to increase the rate of fire. So it's got this cool animation, opens up, stick that in there, kind of like the Sentinel can get charged by the shield batteries. Yep. And then the rate of fire goes up significantly. So kind of the play pattern I like to do is, you know, poke from afar with it. And then if they retreat into a building, run up, pop in the thermite grenade, and then you're kind of, you know, a bit better suited for uh, a closer uh, range engagement there. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's interesting to see that the Spitfire has been moved to the care package. How do you guys think about moving, um, the various weapons and objects into the in and out of the care packages from season to season. That must be that must be quite the contentious discussion around the office. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things that I think you know. Obviously, we have dedicated teams on each area of the game, and so there's a group of folks who are specialized in looking at the the weapon meta and making those types of decisions. But everybody's got an opinion when it comes to weapons, right? Everybody's got right. a favorite. Everybody's got thoughts on 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 how it should work. And so it, it definitely, uh, conversations, some spicy conversations definitely happen in the studio uh, around that. But I think there's a lot, again, like everything else, there's some of it comes into uh, looking at the data and seeing that, okay, you know, we've made some changes in the past. This has been a little bit, you know, too powerful or not powerful enough. And we're trying to balance it out and make sure that every weapon has uh, a good use. Not every weapon needs to be the best weapon for the entire game. Some some weapons are better suited for early games. Some are better suited for late games. Some are for certain play styles. Um, obviously, we want to make sure we have that variety. And so the team's always trying to balance that out. Some weapons have just been around and, and become a long standby, and they develop their own kind of you know meta around themselves that gets ingrained. And we want to make sure that we're shaking that up and keeping it fresh uh, all the time. So a lot, a lot that goes into those decisions as to what goes in, what goes out. Uh, like the Mozambique. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want to talk a little bit about arenas uh, before I let you go, because arenas, we've got ranked arenas now. And I want to see if I can I could learn a little bit more about that, because it sounds interesting, because that's sure. the first time ever. Right, Stephen? It is. Yeah, we introduced arenas uh, last season and, you know, we, we were it was a quite a big learning experience for us. Uh, obviously, over the last two years with Apex, we've done a lot with different modes, but mostly as limited time modes. And so we tried a lot of things um, and learned a lot of things in that process. And Arenas was really the first uh, attempt at trying to do something that was a permanent mode. And so we learned a lot last season and we wanted we wanted to hold off before we brought a, a ranked version of it out so that we could kind of iron out some of the, the kinks and, and, and make sure that we had a stable foundation to put ranked on top of. Uh, and so that's what we've got this season with Emergence. And so we've introduced ranked, uh, which should be pretty familiar to, to Apex players who've played the, the BR ranked uh, yeah. mode. But there are some, some, there are some differences to it. Um, so we've obviously bringing in our own uh, rotation of arenas maps that comes uh, in, into ranked. Uh, we're going to be there's a new set of maps one per uh, one arena per map that uh, fits into rotation on top of the arena specific maps that we've already seen um, to date. Uh, but one of the bigger things that we've got is the the way that we do the matchmaking. So uh, unlike the BR, when you first jump into arenas ranked, you're going to have a, a seeding system where you're going to play a round of 10 matches that are going to allow us to really make sure that those first matches actually place people into the right positions because we don't have anything to go off of yeah. uh, because it is a brand new mode. And so uh, you're going to go into those uh, first 10 seating matches, and that's going to really establish the beginning of your MMR, which is going to be separate from your season rank. So as you try to you know get up to silver, gold, predator, uh, etc., 
that's going to be detached from your actual MMR, which will fluctuate separately to make sure that we're always got uh, even and compelling matches for everybody and that it is, there's actually a challenge and, and, a, and a good experience being retained that doesn't impact what your rank is. The other thing with the ranked um, system is that it'll maintain your highest peak rank. So if you were to come up to Predator, um, but then drop down, uh, you know, you, you earn based off of what your highest uh, goal setting is not what you're currently at at the end of the season. Right. And to that point, there's no split mid-season like there is in BR. Um, so there's no reset halfway through. Uh, it's just for the entirety of the season, you'll see how far you can get in the rank system. Well, everything we've talked about is now available in Apex Legends. I want to thank you guys, Travis. Thank you for all your work on Seer and and and, and the LMG. Appreciate that. Uh, I also want to say, Stephen, thank you very much for for all your work there. You know, getting the team together and getting them all focused. Appreciate all the work oh, you guys done. Pleasure. Any final words before I let you go, Stephen? I just hope everybody uh, enjoys jumping into Emergence, and we can't wait to get in there with you guys. All right, Travis. What about you? Anything before we let you go? Uh, no, just same sentiments. Yeah, really excited for the launch of Emergence and hope everyone enjoys Seer and, and playing it. All right. Thank you to my guests. Uh, Apex is uh, is a huge still love playing it, Jack. Maybe we should play sometime. You don't want me on your squad. <laughs> oh, stop. I, I appreciate the offer, but I mean, maybe I'll bring you back to life a couple times, but uh, that's that's about all I got. I tell you, we got to speak. You know, it's funny. We got a little bit of news here. Uh, let's see if I can find where it is here, because we've got a, some nifty stuff going on. We have I don't know if you've seen this. I, th I've got a video to show this because this is actually pretty cool. Okay. So let me let me go ahead and roll this in here and you will see that this week we announced uh, for, for Halo fans. If you use Waze on your on your mobile device, you will get direct from Master Chief. Check this out. <laughs> right? Wow. Ah. This is the fun part right here. Take the second exit. Yes. We're getting close. <laughs> Keep left. There's no escape. There's no escape. Anyway, that's that's a bit, uh, for Halo Infinite. You can see it. You can go over to news.xbox.com and you can kind of check that out. That thanks to the Waze guys for making us that little clip there. But it's uh, you can drive in the Warthog or a Ghost, and it's 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 kind of nifty. I mean, getting ready, getting ready for Halo. Oh man, we're going to McDonald's. We're going. <laughs> it's in, like, yes. Okay, sh <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That, 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 I love the head. <laughs> Oh yes, I haven't. You know, it's funny. Steve Downs, who's the uh, who's the voice of Master Chief, who you just heard. Uh, I haven't chatted with him in a while. I think since Halo Four. It's been it's been a while. He's a, he's just he's an amazing voice. Radio guy from Chicago. For those of you that don't know, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's it's so funny when you see those unassuming voice actors, where it's just like you would never like you wouldn't give them a second glance on the street, and then you hear their voice, and you're like, oh my gosh, like the. Uh, the gentleman who does the the voice work for the like the uh, the announcer for Halo, you know, the right. overkill that yeah. dude yeah. Yeah. just seems like someone's nice grandpa. And, yeah. you know, and he's but then he, he drops the drops the voice. And is like, that's the guy that, yeah. I've been listening to him like do the my voice. whole life. Do the voice. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting because I, you know, people say that I have a good voice and I, I don't think so. Uh, but I remember, <laughs> um, you know, who told me I had a good voice, uh, Jack, that I was blown away Who's by. That? I was I was doing an event for the Assassin's Creed movie. Okay. And I was I was hosting it, and all of the stars of Assassin's Creed were there, and it was an amazing time. And sitting to my left was Jeremy Irons, Scar. Oh, no. Oh, and, he's got a great voice. Right. My gosh. And, he, and we were practicing, and I, I was doing my opening. We're doing the, hi, I'm Larry Herb, Xbox's Major Nelson. And he says... Oh my, you have quite the voice. And I was I was I was like I was like Scar just said that. <laughs> That's so cool. So, now see I I've, I've been told I have a face for radio. So I you know, that worked out for me where you know, up until recently I I it's been my voice the whole time. So Anyway, so uh, a yeah. couple other things we got coming in here. Uh, let's see if I've got the. Do I have this all queued up? Yeah, I do. It's uh, we have we have. Have you seen this? This is a brand new controller. This is the oh, Aqua wow. Shift Special Edition. So this oh, is look at uh, those grips on the back. That looks yeah, so yeah, cool. This is this is this is exactly here's 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 kind of the close up of the front there. So take a look Ooh. at that. That's that's pretty. It's got an it's got a nice shimmer to it. It's got a color shifting. It's boat. painted like a boat. I love it. <laughs> it's, yes, it's, you know what? I'm gonna let the design team know that Jack says, "quote It's painted like a boat." That'll be the back of box I, quote. <laughs> That that shimmery metallic blue, and the, I love the buttons too. I love I love that the letters are all all the same color. All that, yeah. that dark blue. That's really Take a look pretty. At that. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool. So that's 
that's going to be available. I gotta say, if, if you get on the if you get on the horn with the uh, the design team, ask them when we get more elites. Well, I, I want I, I like there's no like special edition elite controllers. I have so many elite controllers because that's all I play with. I use the paddles like for my thumbsticks and everything. I've got my I've got my elite right here close yep. by. I mean, yep. it's, we, like, we both I, do I love this. Thing. <laughs> and you know, because you know, with someone like us, like we play video games for a living. And these are essentially our tools. So you want to have the best tool you possibly can. And ever since the first Elite came out, it's like, I can't imagine playing on anything else. But, you know, we get the white one and we get the black one. But give me like, give me a shiny blue one. I I will let them know. I'm rambling now. Uh, It's okay. I I will. I will let them know. I wish (laughs) I wish this is not a product announcement. This is a product request. (laughs) So I will be sure to let them know. Yeah, it's funny because we're talking about Halo. In Halo, uh, in Infinite, in the beta, at least, I don't know if it's going to be like this in the in the final version, but you had to hit up on the D-pad to mark. You can okay. mark that there's an enemy there. So, you know, you got to map that to the, got to map that to the, th- oh, yeah. you know, underneath, because you don't want to be going down to the D-pad. But anyway. Yeah, the, the first thing I do is I take the, the big fat paddles on the back and I make those my click in, my thumbstick clicks. Yeah. Because I can't, I can't do a straight down click. I always end up drifting a little bit. Yep. And so, like, oh, if, I'm, if I'm aiming, I'll start drifting away. So I'm like, nope, put it on the, put on the paddles. And that's Done. the best thing to do. Done. Done. Yep. Uh, let's see what else we have. Hey, by the way, we did. I don't know if you saw this. We did the NPC Awards last week. We did a we did a partnership with Ryan Reynolds and the uh, and the and the um, the free guy, the movie Free Guy. So this here's the here's the promotional part of our uh, of our podcast that I kind of have to do some okay. housekeeping here, Jack. So bear with me. So <laughs> I'll stay here. A friend so, of mine's in Free Guy, actually. So. Oh, really? Who do do we know him or her? Uh, uh, laser beam is actually in free guys. So I don't know, but apparently he's in the movie, uh, laser beam. He's an Australian YouTuber. Uh, Landon yep. is his name. Super, yep. super nice guy. He was, a, he was a fan of rooster teeth came, visited us in Austin when, Oh, I can do this. And then went to Australia, started a YouTube channel. And now he's the largest YouTuber in all of Australia. That's the way it so, works. Yeah. Super nice guy. Uh, but yeah, we had the, the winner for the, uh, for the NPC awards was, uh, Samuel Hayden from doom and doom eternal was voted the favorite, uh, fan favorite NPC. The runner up, uh, was guy was guy from played by Ryan Reynolds, which I don't know if that was a runner up <laughs> or was it kind of a, kind of a courtesy award. Um, anyway, Maybe. so free guy, uh, it's, it's coming. When is it? When's it August 13th. So that's coming up very soon. So thank yeah. you everybody that voted for that next week. I'm excited Next, for that one. Oh, August August is flying by. I'll tell you that we are almost. You know, most people are on holiday, like Jeff and Rebecca from this show. Me, me no, you, no. We're still working. We are still working. Um, let's see what else we got I'm for trapped got a, in this room. We got a actually. This is actually really interesting. What do you What do you play your uh, uh, What do you have for your main display for your for playing games? Uh, I I have an ASUS uh, 1440P 185 something. Okay, uh, so, it's, so you're it's so I'm, I'm talking uh, about like in your living room. What do you play on there? Do you play on OLED or oh. Uh, no, I just I just have an old school, you know, like, you know, 4K TV. It's not an OLED. I haven't got I haven't stepped up to that level yet. So uh, but got yeah, it. But that's, it's just it's nice, though. It's it's good. So I think like 65 inch, you know. Oh, OK, so that would no, that's fine. I mean, I, the reason I ask is because there's there's this uh, product that Samsung <laughs> makes called uh, and then Samsung is an official partner for Series X in the US and Canada. They have this cool uh, TV and it's uh, it's it's for the frame. And, and, and what we're doing is, this is actually pretty interesting. Take a look at this. So this is for the 20th anniversary. We have, we've loaded some, uh, some of the, um, is this going to play here or not? Yeah, I guess it will. Here we go. We've loaded some, uh, you know, some iconic, iconic imagery from, um, from Xbox. So in joining in the Xbox's 20th anniversary celebration, uh, they've colla- we've collaborated with Samsung um, for an Xbox through the years collection of iconic game artwork, which are available exclusively through the Frame Art Store, and you can uh, check that out. It's a beautiful TV yeah. with customizable bevels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's uh, yeah, when I the th- TV. I think I have seen this TV. Yeah. So yeah. When, so basically, when it's off, it's playing. It's doing a slideshow. It's not just black, right? Exactly. When when the TV is off, it just kind of it goes through and it just cycles through them. So so that's that's what it looks like. I mean, that's amazing. So we've got Halo, Bioshock. These are just a few of them. Bioshock, Elder Scrolls Five, um, Skyrim. You'll be able to find if you have a frame. If you're one of the lucky people that have a frame, you can find these 4K images uh, in the Frame Art Store at no additional cost. And if you want a frame TV, check out Samsung.com. So there you go. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying Samsung. I got this big gap above my head right now. I move some stuff around. So if you know, if you need to fill something, yeah, let me, let me, there you go. I'm there you here. go. That full screen. Look, there you see, go. That, <laughs> there, see, there you go. So back there I move, I, cause I move my Falcon over and I've got some other Lego stuff that I move. So I have room now. Right. Just right. saying. All right. All right. Good Jack. spot for a TV or, you, you know, or we could have put it over here, but anyway, we're not, we're done with that. Let's get back to you and I. Uh, so, so let's see what else, what, what else we have for news is, you know what? And I know you're a fan, what? Jack. I'm a fan. 
of Game Pass. Ooh, Game Pass. <laughs> Larry, right there, biggest game of all time. You can see with your own eyes the Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Okay. Stop I have been process. waiting to play that. I love me some Solitaire. No, I got, <laughs> I mean, actually, I mean, for what it's worth, Skate and Skate 3, I love me some Skate, you know, coming right. from EA Play as well. And Hades, you guys got Hades. That thing was, yeah. that was that's the hotness, right? Everyone loves some Hades. Yeah, Hades is, in fact, I've been playing it. I got a, I got an early, I got early access to it. And it's, it's what people, you know, it's like, it was like game of the year last year for, on many categories. Yeah. It won or was, was a runner up for many levels. And Greg, who's, uh, who runs that studio over there. I need to get Greg on. And I think Felicia Day, you know, Felicia. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, we, we run in similar circles. Yeah, we all we all kind of run in similar nerd gaming circles, don't we? Yeah, it's if it's one of those things where it's like even if you have never like properly met someone, you're still like, oh yeah, hey, like you feel like you know them because like oh you've been through similar things that we have. You've been making media on the internet now for two decades, so it's like okay, yeah, it's I get you. That long? <laughs> Has it been that long? Feels tech? like it. Sure, it feels, feels like, like it. Feels like it's crazy. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, Game Pass. A lot of cool Game Pass titles coming up. Go to news.xbox.com if you want to check those out, or you can just head over to my blog at Major Nelson, or you can just follow me on Twitter or Jack, follow Jack on Twitter as well. Right, Jack P. That's true. So. Jack underscore P. I tried. I for the longest time I tried to get at Jack, oh, and I was like, oh, why I can't get at Jack? And it's like, oh, at Jack is the guy who made Twitter. Yeah, Oops, so okay, that's not. And happening. I I do have a bo- I have a bone to pick with you and all your friends at Microsoft. Uh-oh. Okay, so who wants the I Jack tried, gamer tag? Is that what this is about? That's exactly what this is about. So for the longest time, my gamer tag was Monkey Five Two Two Five, which Five Two Two Five is my name on a phone number, right. on, a, on a phone pad. Yep. And so I was like Monkey, whatever. And so, and then I was like, then you, the thing popped up where it's like you could change your gamer tag. It's like oh, we can change your gamer tag, cool. And so I wanted to get Jack, and I was like, okay. And Jack was a dead account, like no one had used it. it someone has registered it and never used it. And I was sitting there, I was messaging it, like, listen, I'll give you a couple hundred bucks. Let me have this name. Nothing, 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 and it's no response. And then. I would check it about once a quarter and then one day full gamer tag loads of stuff on it. And it was someone it was a Microsoft employee who worked on the NXE for the Xbox 360. So they had like the the next dashboard experience and everything. So someone at Microsoft jumped on, took the account. Right. And I was like, curses. I wonder who so, has that. I, I'm sure I don't. I'm, I think I may know I who has Jack. that. I, I think I know who has that. Um, but I have Jack P now on uh, on on Xbox. So that's good. That's why I have a, a decent gamer tag. But still, it's not just Jack. It's not just Jack. So do you, hard do you have that. another than Jack P? You don't have to give it out now. Do you have an alt tag, as we like to say in the biz? Uh, not really. I, I've, you know, I have various emails that I use. But I mean, as far as like actual gamer tag, no. I mean, because it's all about the gamer score. You want right. you just want to you want that big number. So like, why would you change it? You know, I just just asking, just asking. <laughs> Do you, what, do you have some Smurf accounts? You jumping in and play well, I, some? Uh, I play do games? have I do have separate accounts that I play games that aren't released under. So, because you have oh, okay. to remember with Xbox, okay. I mean, let's take a look at it. I mean, I can let's see if I can pull it up here. Yep. Uh, I have, I don't know how many people do I have following me, Jack. Let's take a look. So oh, we'll take a yeah. It's, it's, Ooh. yeah, I mean, doesn't that look lovely? Let's take a look here and we will so see. Nice. So, so the problem is, that. Jack, I've nice. got 7,600,000. Million, 7 to 7.6 million people. <laughs> right. So when I play something, people notice. And so I'm very yeah, careful about that. And, you know, when I'm when I have access. To, yes, go ahead. I was going to say, if you go back to that frame right there, you can see the little the little tag you have, the uh, launch team new Xbox experience. That's where that's what I lost mine. Right. It's jerk. Those are all Sorry, those are all the things it. in the lower left hand side. You can see I launched uh, Scorpio, Xbox 360, Xbox. I mean, the list I mean, it doesn't matter. You, I don't want Oof, you don't want to see me. That, Oh, it, it hurts. It hurts. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Just just rubbing salt in the wound now, Larry. I guess we should talk about something else. We want to talk about a want to talk about a roller coaster, maybe. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's talk about roller coasters. We're talking about theme parks. I got all my maps here as well. I've been collecting oh. those. I've got. I got. I've I have so many I started I started scanning in maps because I've just been collecting theme park maps and I just have a flatbed scanner and after about two hours of scanning maps nonstop, I realized I was about a third of the way done. I'm like, oh my God, I have I have so much so much more to get to. You need that, an intern or something to do that, right? I, I need an intern, but I yeah, you know, I I'm I i can not pay. I can't pay right now. Right. I get <laughs> so. it. I get it. And no, I, I'm, I'm not into the whole like free intern thing. You got if you work, you should you should earn something for it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 um you know I have some of those. You and I were talking before we started recording. I've got a bunch of those maps because I'm kind of a cartography nerd. I have a feeling. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like in some other life a long time ago, I was a map person, like a cartographer or something, because <laughs> I just look at maps 
like this is a true story when i was growing up you know when you're a little kid you put stuff on your walls and i had maps on my walls and one of the greatest maps i ever had i think my mom got it for me it was from a national geographic and it was a map of the moon and i'll never Ooh. forget it because you opened it up and had the dark i think it had the dark and the light side of the moon and i was like this is a this is a map of another planet it was so i thought that was the coolest map ever that's so cool. Well, you know, they're building the uh, Starship down in the top, you know, so people are going to be going to the moon, launching uh, Texas soil all the way to the moon. Are you, are you, are you going to plan on going up there? Is that what you're going to do? Man, I don't know. Maybe. I've got a lot of animals, though, that I feel bad if I left them behind. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Pop. Am I cutting out? Am I yeah, cutting you're cu out? yeah, you're cutting out a little bit. How's your? It looks like they're, are they doing some high-speed internet testing over there? I don't know what's going I on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think no one, no one's uploading anything right now. Oh my goodness. Anyway, what time is it? It's two o'clock. Yeah. It's who knows? It's upload time. Well, you know what, Jack, maybe this is a good yeah. time that we wrap up. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and plug your, your show, the annual pass a little bit more, tell people where they can find it. And then I'll let you go if they can hear you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. If I'm still here, if I still exist, I don't know if you, if you can still see me in the frames, uh, annual pass is available anywhere. You get your podcast. It's on all the different things It's also over on rooster teeth. If you want to go to rooster teeth, you can check it out there. Um, every single week I ask a question of the community who listens and I give away a park map signed by myself and Jeff Ramsey. So, uh, yeah, so go over, check it out, listen to it and, uh, so spread the love and the positivity that comes with theme parks and, uh, and let me keep doing my show. So thank you very much. Larry for having me on. Uh, Jack, I got to tell you, it's it's such a great, I I, I want to come on your show. I've got tons of theme okay. park stories to share. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to overstay my welcome, but I think I've got enough for maybe more than one episode. I'll just say that. Oh, wow. So, and, okay. Well, we'll, I, st we'll start with one and see how it goes from there. Yeah. Well, it's up, it's up to the audience, but I've also loved to see Jeff. I haven't seen Jeff in forever. Oh man. Yeah. It's been, I mean, you came, you came on our show. You came on uh, Keeping the Lights On, and that was probably May of last year. It was about it so was a little it's bit been over, over a year. Yeah, a little bit over a year ago. And I was down in, do you remember when I came down to your offices? Wow, that was like four or five years ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you came to the studios. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all different now. It's all being moved around. It's crazy. Good, good, good. Well, it's, uh, is, 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 is Bernie moving you guys offshore for tax implication purposes? <laughs> Dude, Ber Bernie, Bernie is actually, he's moved offshore. So he's, he's no longer, he's no longer living in Texas anymore. Where does so, he live? Uh, he's moved elsewhere. Ah. Uh, uh, undisclosed location. <laughs> understood. Understood. <laughs> understood. That's classic Bernie. He may, he right may be there. wanted by, maybe wanted by the FBI or so. I don't know. <laughs> Who, knows? Who knows? Bernie's a mysterious individual. Anyway, uh, Jack, always good to see you. Annual pass. Check out that podcast. Appreciate you coming on. Check you out over at Rooster Teeth. Or you can follow you on Xbox Live as Jack P. So, <laughs> yeah, Jack P or Jack underscore P on Twitter, whichever you one go. you want. All right, my friend, we'll see you next time. Thanks again. And I hopefully we can see each other in person sometime, but I'll be looking for that invite for, for your, for your podcast in your past. Thanks again, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Larry.